So Pluto, 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 it is such a mysterious planet. It is icy cold, it has its own system of moons around it and um, basically think of how the caterpillar becomes the butterfly. That my friend is Pluto. Think of how the snake sheds its skin okay and and regenerates itself that is pluto okay now uh, pluto is the god of the netherworlds in roman mythology and his greek counterpart is hades so what do you think this netherworld symbolizes it symbolizes our unconscious so the conscious mind cannot ever truly comprehend the unconscious okay that's why scorpio is so mysterious pluto rules scorpio the eighth sign of the zodiac and um, you know inside real astrology uh, pluto is not used for uh, predictions or for archetypes because uh, you know Pluto is not one of the five traditional planets but if you want to explain to a side real astrologer what Pluto truly stands for just tell them everything to do with the eighth house is Pluto and BAM you get it right and they get it right okay and and you penetrate uh, through their um, awareness and you explain to them what Pluto is now pluto rules our primal urges and our fear and pluto is here to show us how to transmute that fear into into a greater awareness fear need not incapacitate us fear can also be our greatest strength so bran uh, bran stark from game of thrones so he had a conversation with his dad ned stark he he thought about bravery okay and and he asked his dad he said can a man be brave if he's afraid so Ned Stark turns around in his Ned Stark way and he says well my son this is the only time that a man can be brave so do you see the dichotomy our fear can be our greatest strength what doesn't kill you does make you stronger okay now uh, Pluto rules everything eighth house inheritance shared resources alimony debt taxes hegemony power control uh, death birth regeneration metamorphosis obsession okay coercion viruses waste terrorism scandals shadow governments uh, puppet dictators dictators uh, intuition everything that's hidden Okay, it's very intuitive, very psychic energy. With Pluto, there's no cogitation. There's no thinking about the archetype of Pluto. It's, it's instinctual awareness. You just know it. Left or right, you know. You know, it's that raw gut feeling. Okay. Now, it rules over two of our very important processes. Our reproductive system it rules over and our elimination processes okay it tells me that uh, it tells all of us that to create we need to let go of what's not necessary the human body cannot function if there's waste material within us if we don't purge okay so uh, Pluto teaches us the lesson of letting go think of what Herman has said that some of us think that holding on makes us strong but sometimes it's about letting go and and this is the lesson the sole lesson of Pluto that release purge expunge uh, exterminate eradicate let go let go okay and um, think of Ingmar Bergman's film okay uh, the seven seals and there you see death playing chess with the protagonist and and that's what Pluto does with us it it 
it uh, is watching us forever through its different transits it speaks to us pluto is transpersonal okay it's a generational planet so you can study whole generations if you study pluto in um, libra pluto in scorpio Pluto is now in, in Capricorn from 2008 and then 2026 Pluto will go into Aquarius. Pluto has an elliptic orbit so each sign uh, it doesn't stay for the same period of time. So sometimes it stays up to 30 years in a particular sign. So um, and, and it's got like 245 odd years that it takes to complete one uh, re revolution around the sun. So this is is so important because Pluto transmutes and transforms. So wherever it, wherever you're holding on to whatever you don't need, Pluto will come and crash it down. It's very chironic in the sense it teaches us that uh, the poison is the very med medicine, like homeopathy, you know. Now, um, now with Pluto, there's always a sense of being dwarfed, dwarfed by whatever problems face us. So uh, in, in each sign, in each house, of course, piecing together the whole story, we may feel dwarfed by our financial situation. We may feel dwarfed by our, with our siblings and interactions with our family. We may feel dwarfed by, um, you know, our lack of creativity or, or tremendous creativity or tremendous psychic awareness. Pluto, in a way, teaches us about the dark night of the soul. And every time there is a major transit to Pluto and you are affected uh, or the collective is affected, these transits feel like 500 shades of dark. <laughs> it's something I made up. Not 50 shades of grey, 500 shades of dark. Okay, Pluto can be insidious, can be nefarious, manipulative. Pluto is big money. Okay, big power. That's why the word plutocracy. Okay, when... It's, it's about uh, displaying your power and controlling people. That's why Scorpios, uh, Pluto rules Scorpios can be manipulative. They, they seek to control, they seek to possess. There's almost a pathological obsessive compulsion with Pluto, if, if you're not watching it, if it's in a hard aspect. Now, Pluto in Aries. Now, Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, okay? It's, it's an air, it's a fire sign, it's masculine. It's all about starting new things. It's about new experiences, new adventure. It rules the head. So, uh, Aries is a child of the zodiac, okay? And it's always about me, me, me and selfishness. So, I think the Aries, Air, uh, Pluto in Aries, it's all about letting go of the ego, and, and rebirthing a new you that's not just about me, me, me. It, it, it's, it's almost like uh, Pluto here is uh, helping you grow up and mature and look at your unconscious. Really take that, that, that actual plunge because, you know, uh, Aries doesn't like to really delve deep, deep anywhere. They like to be on the surface, flitting from one experience to the other. Because here the soul is new. The soul is just learning new things, experiencing new things. The head, the, the eyes, all the auditory stimulus. So... Uh, you know, you are being affected by that. And Pluto here, like I said, it's chironic. So Pluto destroys to only rebuild what is needed for soul growth. So I think with, with uh, Aries, it's about identity and the ego identity versus the higher identity, the soul identity. And um, this is quite profound because Pluto makes long-lasting changes. And, and really shows us um, what's lurking in the quagmire of our unconscious, you know. And how can consciousness, uh, how can the conscious mind make sense of it? Okay. Now, um, Pluto in Taurus. Taurus has to do with materialism. So Pluto here, hard aspect that can be overt materialism or, or wounding that, that has to do a wounding. It's in... Uh, it's ironic, I told you, but, you know, pain and, and death of our finances and re rebirthing our finances, of course, with uh, squares and oppositions, there could be tremendous hoarding or obsession with materialism.
with Taurus. Our obsession with uh, the way we look, um, you know, uh, Taurus also is Venus, Taurus is Venusian and it also rules the physical body and beauty. So there can be an obsession towards trying to look beautiful or trying to, you know, hold on to youth, almost a pathological need for it, okay? Uh, so... Uh, again, Taurus is very stubborn and actually in Taurus, Pluto is in fall as in Pluto is not expressing his energies beautifully because Taurus hates change. And, and if Pluto teaches us one thing, it is this, that change is the only permanent thing. Again, okay, permanence is the only permanent thing in this reality. Everything is in flux and change and shift and, 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 and that's what Pluto is. It's changing, churning the, the uh, you know, the, the cre creation process. It's churning it, like recreating it, you know, like a broth, a cosmic broth that Pluto is cooking up. Uh, the, the, the dance of the planets only symbolize the dance of energy within, as above, so below. So um, understanding how to do, to let go of overt materialism or overt clinging on to uh, our appearance, I mean, that could be the shadow version of Taurus. It's definitely Pluto gives, uh, is also all about our sex drive. So in Taurus, Taurus is anyway very sensual, very, very physical. So there could be a, a need to overindulge in sex, okay? Um, and like, as, and like with Aries, it's always going to be, uh, Pluto will help you re, rebirth the way you connect or have sex with someone. With Aries, it's always fiery, passionate, dominance. Okay, so depending on the aspects, that's what Pluto here is to teach you. Teaching you to let go, let go of whatever stock's sick or whatever's not working anymore. Now, Pluto in Gemini, uh, Pluto is trans, is trans, uh, tr transmutation, and Gemini is all about curiosity, learning, communicating. So there could be like the, the rebirth of your communication process, your thought process, or your intellect, or how you uh, learn certain things and put to use your vocational learning. So you know, you could be reinventing that. And if you really go, and, and third house also, Gemini also deals with siblings. So if there's some deep, um, maybe, uh, you know, change in the dynamics or death of a particular way a relationship used to be with, with, with your siblings. And if you really delve into it, you can go to, Pluto digs deep. So you can get to the psychology and the very crux of it. And Gemini is known to communicate. So with this energy, you can very viably communicate whatever this this uh, deep feelings that you have, the deep traumas that you faced, you know. Uh, Pluto is definitely about, gives us trauma, okay, wherever it is. There's always something hidden with Pluto. Pluto also deals with secrets and scandals, remember. So there could be something with Aries, there could be something hidden about your own identity that you want to hide, that you don't want to tell people. Uh, with um, Taurus, maybe you want to hide about your finances, maybe you want to look better than, than what you have, maybe you want to spend more than you earn, and this can be a very destructive cycle. Now with Gemini, the wounding could also have to do with your brothers and sisters, like, you know, okay, uh, you went through some real hell with your brothers and sisters, and, uh, and you communicated through publishing, because Pluto in Gemini is definitely, I mean, the generation's coming way later, 244, four, some crazy number, you know, many, many years from now, and this will be a time when we want to communicate about deep things, about things that are caught, things that are hidden, things that, uh, you know, we didn't want to bring up. We, that makes us uncomfortable. There's always, with Pluto, there's always this discomfort that we feel. Now, can, we can use the discomfort and we can transmute it into higher awareness because ultimately Pluto is here to tell you, hey, become that butterfly, become that phoenix, resurrect from those, from those ashes, become that proverbial beautiful phoenix. 
you know that that just soars uh, above the mundane world into greater uh, realms of spiritual awareness okay now uh, pluto in cancer now pluto transformation death regeneration secret scandals uh, manipulation insidious behavior all this is pluto all right <coughs> the shadow <coughs> the unconscious okay everything that is lurking deep within us so here i think you will need to rebirth your family dynamics maybe even uh, what you have with your mother and how you interact with her or if there's been some unresolved issues you know that that could be triggered with pluto transits or with any other transits to your pluto it's it's almost like a diabolical violent uh, a situation sometimes you know and you you can't avoid it you know something dies but maybe a new awareness seeps in if, if you're having problems with your mother or if you're having problems in your family or your foundation or finding security comfort then you know you may need to re-evaluate reassess your own um monologue with yourself your own awareness you know i i are you in some kind of um coercive ideology are you in some kind of um, you know something that is insidious you need to purge it you need to clean it okay now uh family cancer has to do with um our breasts okay it's it's what what covers uh, this our uh, covers our heart actually so and even uh, according to esoteric astrology cancer is uh, the sign from which this 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 wheel of humanity has originated so the wheel is a very interesting symbol in many cultures because it symbolizes like in the zodiac it's also a wheel it symbolizes everything is cyclical and the churning of time okay now um so with cancer there's always this feeling of uh, being inadequate maybe i told you pluto makes you feel dwarfed wherever it is so maybe you feel inadequate to look after your family or maybe you feel inadequate uh, with maybe not being able to breastfeed okay because pluto cancer i don't know this this could be interesting to study as i said these are uh, generational energies so you really need to go back and you really need to find uh, all the um, the key triggers and need to pinpoint the years and you're going to see that okay when um, pluto was in cancer did we see um uh you know women not breastfeeding could be could be a possibility because i i always like to see symbols and and i i, I like to really go into it so all the all the organs it rules and and everything or the physical body is just echoing uh, the the cosmos above you know so that is very interesting to see how our physical organs get get affected by each planet by different planets and their transits and how each sign is ruled by a different planet and um the planet that's uh, transiting it is is again touching some other organs so you can then together piece that story you know remember as chiron said um as chiron showed us that the the poison is the remedy whatever you are compulsively attracted to or obsessing about or um, just clinging on to if you just transmute that energy it it could take it to a higher vibration whereby you can really use this energy okay mm, and um, in cancer in pluto definitely the sex has to be more than just sex it has to be more familial more um familiar with someone you're really connected to and pluto and cancer definitely triggers um a lot of psychic awareness a lot of empathy cancer is the sign of the mother 
so here Pluto is obviously I mean if you have Pluto and Cancer your mom going to die um, depending on the aspects I mean I don't ever predict death but you can see a pattern I mean if somebody's mother has died and if you study their chart then you can see a pattern forming okay and 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 then you can piece together the story and that's what astrology is doing it's giving you the opportunity to um, really look at what's going on with with a different uh, lens so you're not like oh this is happening to me this is happening you study the archetypes and you know okay this is what i can expect this is what i need to work with okay and and knowing that you need to work with this atomic energy of Pluto, this diabolical, uh, forever changing, shifting. And Pluto is not slow. It's, it's of course, a very slow-moving planet. It's a slow in the collective. But if you are triggered by Pluto, for instance, uh, back in 2011, Pluto-Uranus square and... Uh, the day it happened, 11th of March, 2011, I mean, it was just totally devastating. It, it was really, really uh, so devastating for me. And um, it just happened, just like that. Uranus and Pluto together, uh, that conversation that was happening, that tense conversation, the square, absolutely changed my, my reality in a minute, in a second, okay? It was hard. It was really hard, but it also grew me up. It, it helped me become the person I am. So that was a bit about Pluto through these four signs. I already made these videos, as I told you, but the sound was not right. Remember this. Let things end. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Thank you. Subscribe, like, comment, share www.tinahills.com and if you have your Pluto in Leo then this is your video so let's understand the energy signature of Pluto what does Pluto mean in astrology so previously it when it was discovered we had the atomic age that burst upon us okay atomic bombs Hiroshima Nagasaki and uh, we we had so much upheaval with control and power okay and Pluto was again of course demoted from being a planet to uh, not a planet then again back to being a planet so there's all these this flux and change and trust me Pluto will not have it any other way okay the dance of the planets above symbolize the dance within our hearts of consciousness so Pluto deals with our primal urges and, and our fears, okay? So uh, Bran asked his father that, can a man be truly, um, can a man be truly brave when he's afraid? That is the time when a man can truly be brave can only be brave, said his father. So we can imagine uh, Ned Stark sort of, you know, telling his son this because he understands that fear need not be your greatest enemy. It can be your biggest motivator. Now, fear is not something you can run away from. It's a basic human experience. But how you react to fear and how you transmute that fear is, is the crux here. And that is Pluto's lessons that you learn if you study astrology. Now, Pluto in Leo. So remember, Pluto is all, it, it rules Scorpio, okay? And uh, it's, Pluto is the, is the Roman god of the underworld and his Greek counterpart is Hades. And the underworld symbolizes the unconscious, okay? Where we, we must dive in to glean pearls of wisdom, okay? Because, but how can we truly understand the unconscious? It's incomprehensible. So uh, that's Pluto's energy. It's mysterious, it's icy cold, it's tiny, yet so diabolical. You know, Pluto is smaller than the moon. So um, Pluto rules inheritance, shared resources. It rules taxes, all things of cult, um, sex, uh, birth, death, uh, 
uh, obsession, coercion, viruses, shadow governments, puppet governments, terrorism, uh, scandals, uh, the unconscious, okay, I told you that, everything that is not uh, for you to put away in tiny uh, labels, in neat tidy labels, not tiny, tidy labels, okay, that is Pluto, everything that is beneath the surface, okay, but it's bubbling away like a volcano, okay, waiting to erupt. So, uh, if you if you've seen the Seven Seals by Ingmar Bergman, the Swedish master of cinema, then you've seen this iconic imagery of death playing chess with the protagonist. And that's what uh, Pluto does with us. It plays chess with us, and and it reminds us of our mortality every uh, time it crosses our path. And and this is not something to be scared of, because. Um, Although wherever Pluto sits, it's very chironic, the energy of Pluto, very chironic. Um, there's always this 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 uh, feeling of being dwarfed. Now in Leo, Leo is about creative expression. It's a fifth house ruled by the sun, okay? It's about expression, about creating art, writing, theater, dramatics, being center stage. So Pluto here kind of makes you understand and uh, recreate, rebirth the creative processes within you. How uh, to uh, take take that take your experiences and how you might make it into art. Take your take your broken heart and make it into art. I think Pluto in Leo is very symbolic of this. Okay, and. Um, Leo is is about control in so many ways because Leo the lion okay the lion is is a pack leader wants to control controls the whole pack okay doesn't do much work gets everybody else in the pack to do it but Leo kind of force uh, Pluto kind of forces Leo to release to let go because ultimately that is the sole lesson of Pluto letting go okay we may think that um come to think of it uh there's a quote by herman hess and it goes like this that uh some consider control to be a form of power but some of us think that holding on makes us strong but sometimes it is about letting go exactly it's just like it is about letting go so so herman hess understood this platonic power of of uh letting it go the the card of the tarot that uh pluto rules is death it's a card that is also associated with scorpio card number 13 so this death is of course metaphorical because with every death comes a new birth Okay, every time you clear space in your mind, in your soul, in your external world, uh, when you clear space, you clear it for something new to come in. Okay, so recreate that artist within you. I mean, Pluto will make sure if if, if you have uh, Pluto and Leo, it's going to change you every single time, help you reinvent yourself. But understand, Pluto is not a personal planet. It's a transpersonal planet. And its energies are um, generational. So when you study the dance of Pluto through uh, in the skies, then you understand how generations operate. Sometimes Pluto has got an elliptical orbit. So it takes different um, time and different signs. Sometimes like in Scorpio, it, 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 is, it was 12 years. Now it's 12 years. Okay, when it goes furthest out, it's 30 years in a sign. So this takes Pluto... 265 or something like that's a huge number of years to circumvent around the sun okay and and if you study pluto cycles then you understand generations okay you you see how uh, people operated out of fear how people got over their fear overcame their fear and how they used it as 
their greatest tool uh, for self mastery because uh, Pluto rules Scorpio and if you know about the archetypes of Scorpio, Scorpion, the Eagle and Phoenix. So ultimately Pluto's lesson is to become the proverbial Phoenix. You've seen a, 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 the snake shed its skin. That's Pluto. And the, ca the caterpillar becomes the butterfly. So in Leo, it's about, uh, you know, if, if your ideas are not taking off, if you're, your artistic ideas, your creative ideas, then time to uh, rebirth yourself. We have an artist inside of us. All of us have it. So it's time to give path uh, and a voice to that artist. And, and um, really understand Pluto's depth and enact it out for the world to see with Pluto and Leo. So uh, that was a bit about Pluto and Leo. You hope you like that video as much as I like my making it for you. So uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, the YouTube usuals. Don't uh, disappoint me and please sub. And visit my website www.tinahills.com. Thank you. This video is about Pluto in Virgo. So what is, is Pluto all about in astrology? So Pluto in astrology rules our primal urges, our fear, okay? But fear need not be our weakness. Fear can also be our greatest strength. So uh, Bran thought about it and he asked his father, Ned Stark, can a man uh, be brave if he's afraid? And Ned Stark says, well, that is the only time a man can be truly brave. Think about the dichotomy. If fear uh, uh, sort of paralyzes us, but it need not. So if you don't know the lessons of Pluto, it, it could paralyze you. Okay, It could make you feel dwarfed. There's always a sense of trauma and being dwarfed wherever Pluto sits because Pluto rules death. A regeneration, taxes, uh, power, hegemony, obsession, coercion, viruses, terrorists, atomic bombs, waste material, shadow government, dictators, scandals. So you get the gist. Pluto is big money and big power. But with big power comes big responsibilities. But Pluto's lessons only become obvious to us if we are, of course, watching and observing and listening with an open heart. And if you're willing to let go, okay? So Herman Hess says that some, some of us think that holding on makes us stronger. But sometimes it's about letting go. So this is the final lesson of Pluto letting go uh not holding on to what's not necessary because pluto will do away with what's not necessary if you're clinging on don't cling on because it'll only result in tragedy so this card in the tarot i'm holding it reverse this is the death card card number 13 rules scorpio and rules pluto and this is never about physical death, of course. This is about endings and new beginnings. This, this tells us that reality is cyclical. Okay, it's, it's a wheel. That's why the wheel has been used in so many um, traditions and systems. Okay, from the Buddhists to the Hindus to the Mesopotamians. Now, um, in Virgo, Virgo is an earth sign, although it's an earth sign, it's very mercurial, it's ruled by Mercury, okay, and um, it's essentially about the physical body, healing, and service. So if Pluto is in Virgo for you, then you're immensely acutely aware of your physical body. Okay, you may not need to eat a lot. Pluto in the sixth house, I have seen people don't tend to eat a lot. Okay, they can survive in very tiny portions. So 
a Virgo, uh, you eat healthy, surely with Virgo, Pluto and Virgo, you want to transmute uh, the, the, your um, energies and what you eat, you want to eat healthy, you want to uh, do yoga, this is something that I've seen with, you're very conscious of your physical body, it may cause you trauma, you may suffer, like Chiron, I told you Pluto's a bit like Chiron, makes you suffer wherever he is, okay? But it, it, it kills something off to rebirth something new. So something that is gone, something that is dead, is dead because it was not serving your highest purpose, okay? It, it was uh, not taking you to where you need to go. It's the ultimate lesson of uh, Pluto is becoming the proverbial scorp um, the, the proverbial phoenix and resurrecting, okay? Becoming the proverbial phoenix, uh, three levels of Scorpio. And Pluto rules Scorpio. So it's as mysterious as Scorpio, the two sign, the, the planet and the sign actually. You know, they're so mysterious. Now, um, with Virgo, you have to reinvent uh, your everyday and how you serve the world, how you uh, look after your physical body, how you uh, offer healing. A lot of Pluto and Virgo people do tend to become healers because they want to transmute the pain of the physical body. Okay, they want to transmute uh, the the physical symptoms of ailments. Okay, and and they want to uh, help you live a better life. That's what Virgo wants to do. They want to be industrious. They want to be helpful. Now Pluto rules over two processes in our body: at the elimination process and the reproductive process. So uh, tells you how important important this planet is okay pluto rules uh, all our sex organs and our elimination organs is the same you know it's it's everything is happening there it's it's we create and we eliminate so um if we don't eliminate our physical body cannot survive so think of the caterpillar becoming the butterfly or think of the snake shedding its skin think of the scorpion becoming the the phoenix that is Pluto. It's it's alchemical. It's nuclear. It's it's diabolical and powerful. But at the end of the day, it's up to you how you want to use that power. It's up to you to um, learn the lessons of Pluto and uh, grow and evolve with it because during uh, Virgo is actually a mutable sign but Virgo doesn't like change and um, they, they, they like to you know control everything or, or uh, neatly uh, you know in a tidy manner label everything and put everything away but that just doesn't work with Pluto it's it's you know, breaking things up, teaching you impermanence. Because impermanence is really the only truth. There is no higher truth than impermanence. Okay, and um, how we move through the flux and the change and how we adapt and how we let go. Okay, so um, remember that Pluto was shrunk in size by Jupiter. So we also see this playing out in astronomy when Pluto is once being promoted to a planet, then demoted to not a planet, promoted again. But Pluto has its own moon, moon surrounded, by the way, Charon, C-H-A-R-O-N. It's its primary satellite and uh, orbits around Pluto. It's icy cold, it's mysterious, and, and it teaches us all about... Um, uh, mastering that primal urge and letting things die whatever needs to die needs to die right so that was a bit about Pluto and Virgo hope you like that video as much as I like making it for you like comment subscribe share and visit my website www.tinahills.com thank you so if you have your Pluto in Libra then this is your video
Now let's understand the energy of Pluto. What does it signify in astrology? Now when Pluto was discovered the world saw atomic energy for the first time and believe me this is the very energy of Pluto. It, it rules over death and regeneration. Tremendous transmutation, metamorphosis, it is our very primal urges, okay? It's our sexuality, it's, it's our fear. So fear can be incapacitating, but fear can also be our greatest motivator. Now, this is not something we can escape from. Fear is, is a part of the human experience. But what we do with that fear is, is ultimately uh, up to us. And that is what helps the soul growth. So Pluto is going to kill and destroy whatever is not serving your soul growth. Okay, now um, Bran thought about it. Bran from Game of Thrones. Can a man still be brave if he's afraid? He asked his dad. This is the only time that a man can be brave, replied his dad. I mean, we can totally understand Ned Stark saying this because fear can be your greatest enemy but again as I said it can be your greatest strength. Pluto is icy cold, it's mysterious, it, it, it's the underworld. Pluto is the Roman god of the underworld, the unconscious. His Greek counterpart is Hades. So whenever we swim uh, within our unconscious that is plutonic. Okay, and the conscious mind cannot comprehend this or put it into words or neatly label it, okay, because this is incomprehensible, inexplicable, okay. Now, Pluto and its lower vibrations can be insidious, it, it can be manipulative, okay, and it rules over all eight house issues, as I said, inheritance, shared resources, partners, finances, debts, taxes, uh, obsession, coercion, viruses, atomic bombs, terrorists, scandals, um, shadow governments, dictators, uh, our intuition, all of this is Pluto's domain. Okay, and every single time that you experience a Pluto transit, like one of your personal planets is getting triggered by Pluto, you feel uh, 500 shades of dark. It's no more 50 shades of grey. But um, honestly, Pluto excavates, excavates our primal fear. I mean, there's no uh, learning with Pluto. It's, it's pretty black and white, yes or no, left and right, okay? Now, uh, Pluto in Libra. Libra is the seventh sign of the zodiac. It, it rules the pelvis. Uh, it gives us support, balance. Okay, Pluto rules over two processes, elimination, reproduction. Okay, two very vital processes in the human body. Now, Libra is about relationships, it's about partnerships, it's about balance between spirit and matter, it's about justice. So having Pluto there, you can become a fanatic about justice and, and you can be a fanatic about how a relation should be. Okay, you want all or nothing. Okay, you, you don't want to have the nicety of Libra, you know, you want to be in harmony, you want all or nothing. Okay, this is how Pluto in Libra is. Of course, depending on which house, according to that, the, the lessons will come forward. But for instance, it's your second house of income and resources. Pluto in Libra, Libra is your second house. Then there'll be tremendous transformation and you have to find balance. You see, Libra is the point, is a tipping of the scale. It's when matter and spirit are in perfect balance. Okay, now... Uh, so, so Libra, Pluto and Libra is, is talk about these things, okay? And you may experience a lot of relationships going kaput, okay? Like just, just finishing out of nowhere. So if it's your second house, you know, relationships and finances can be triggered. Like, like you're, you may have uh, issues with your partner's finances or they're not making enough income. 
okay there are very many ways that this archetype can play out and and wherever pluto sits it's very chironic okay chiron the wounded healer it's very chironic in the sense that it it, it tell, teaches you how your uh, poison is your medicine okay so um Pluto definitely in Libra, you've got to learn about letting go. You can, your idea of justice, it may not be be all and end all of it. Okay, somebody else may have an opinion. I know as a Libra, you are very hell bent on um, uh, people and, and their opinion, and you want to be good. But Pluto gives you a certain starkness or rawness. Okay, it's, it's that primal uh, feeling. Okay, that you have so reinventing yourself in the realm of your expectations from a relationship or your real relationship I mean this these are things that can liberate you and help you become that proverbial phoenix you know that resurrects Pluto rules Scorpio so here there is this this depth to this this placement Libra is not always about depth okay Libra likes to keep it neat Oh, clean uh, beautiful ruled by Venus after all so there's this compulsion to be clean but Pluto it can be kind of messy you know what happens when you have tremendous power you know and there's an explosion things get messy but power doesn't always necessarily have to it doesn't have to be bad or negative power is power ultimately how you use it is is your lesson and with libra you you don't want to misuse power because you know think about it it's 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 about justice you want justice more than most people you want fairness okay libra you want fairness and with pluto there you 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 will <coughs> you know understand that it's not always about expectations sometimes it's about letting go as herman has said that uh, some of us think that holding on makes us stronger but sometimes it is about letting go so pluto is here to tell you that it's about letting go and wherever pluto is if something is hidden so uh, if it's a second house as i said of income you have hidden income okay that you can make through maybe art or something so you know because it's venusian libra's venus in her airy manifestation intellectual so pluto will definitely take you through messy experiences okay and libra doesn't like it to get messy you know if you study uh, astrology you see from one sign to the other the energy is so a uh, different okay take libra and scorpio i mean libra is is so harmonious and scorpio is is about taking digging deep investigating no matter even if it's ugly okay because um, you know what is beauty what is um ugly these are things that uh, we'll grow and evolve with as we learn to work with Pluto and through the 500 shades of dark transits. Uh, it can take us to dark nights of our soul, of course, or the dark night of the soul. But then again, letting go. If you look at the death card, this is the card that um, in the tarot that uh, Pluto rules. Ru ru uh, it's also associated to Scorpio. It's about letting go. You know, when something is not necessary, it's about tidying up. It's about saying those necessary goodbyes. Okay, for Libra, definitely. Because um, you don't want to change. But Pluto will teach you change. So I hope you like that video as much as I like making it for you. Uh, subscribe, like, comment, share. It means the world to me. And let me know what you think of these videos. Uh, down below, visit my website www.tinahills.com. Thank you. This Pluto is a diabolical energy. It is a planet of death and rebirth and intense transmutations. Okay, 
Pluto deals with our primal fears and our primal urges, okay? And it's very mysterious. It's icy cold. It's got its own moon system around it. Sharon is its uh, leading satellite. And um, it rules Scorpio. And this is Scorpio, Pluto and Scorpio. So uh, I love making videos uh, with planets in rulership. Now, Pluto is... Uh, uh, the ruler of Scorpio. In traditional astrology, it was Mars, but uh, as as we've grown and uh, adapted and we've discovered Pluto, I think it's befitting that Pluto rules Scorpio because uh, Scorpio is as diabolical, as volatile, as, as insidious, as manipulative sometimes, of course, in its lower vibrations, as Scorpio. The Pluto and Scorpio, they, they go so well together okay so people inside real astrology they don't always they don't use pluto neptune pluto okay but uh if you want to get them to understand what pluto is all about tell them eight house and they know bam inheritance shared resources power uh, regeneration obsession coercion viruses waste terrorists uh atomic bombs, uh, shadow governments, dictators, the unconscious, intuition, scandals, uh, big money, big power, you know. Uh, it's, it's Pluto, although it's smaller than the moon, it's very tiny and it was once upon a time considered a planet, then again it was demoted, then again it was promoted. I think now astronomers consider Pluto to be a planet. Uh, in astrology, Pluto is 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 an energy that cannot be ignored because pluto teaches us how to deal with our fear how to transmute that fear into victory how to translate and metamorphose into into that proverbial phoenix that resurrects from its own ashes and and flies away into a brand new vista so uh, pluto is the roman god of the underworld unconscious the conscious mind cannot even comprehend what's going on that's why scorpio is so deep so mysterious because you can't quite grasp the scorpio okay ascendant moon you can't grasp them because you don't know uh, what they're thinking because they don't know what they're thinking oftentimes uh, these these emotions and feelings they flit by and and they come from a deep deep place within the psyche the unconscious that's why scorpio wants to investigate this archetype of the investigator you want to get there you want to investigate and you want to dig deep and you want to get to the truth so pluto digs deep okay deep 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 there's no superficiality about this nothing is superfluous okay Everything is necessary. The pain, the hurt, the ugliness, everything encompassing the one uh, reality that we experience. So that's why these two are so good together. Pluto in Scorpio is definitely a strong position, okay? And it's obviously weakened in Taurus, which is the polarity of Scorpio. Now, uh, Pluto uh, rules like Scorpio, the elimination processes of the human body and the reproduction, uh, reproductive processes. So all our, our um, reproductive organs are ruled by Pluto and Scorpio. So how we have sex, how we interact, uh, you know, how we reproduce, all this has to do with uh, Pluto. How we eliminate Elimination is about letting go of what is unnecessary. And Pluto is here to teach us that sometimes the lesson, uh, the, the, the wisdom lies in letting go. Reminds me of this uh, quote from Herman Hess that uh, some of us think holding on makes us stronger. But sometimes it's about letting go. It's profound because, you know, 
yeah, Pluto transits can seem like 500 shades of dark, not 50 shades of gray because, you know, and Scorpio's life may seem like 500 shades of dark, but it is here to tell you to let go of what is not necessary. Let it go. Release it. Erase it. Rebirth yourself. Be that phoenix, you know. Now in the Tarot, this is the card, 13, death, that rules Scorpio and Pluto. So death is not, of course, physical death. It's it's metaphoric. It's not literal. It it means uh, death refers to birth because everything is a cycle. Uh, reality is cyclical. So when there is death, there is the definitive birth of something new. When you uh, make space in your emotional life, in your relationships, for you clear out the junk. And, and you clear space. You clear space for something new. And Pluto is ever ready to, to help you uh, get to what you really need for your soul growth. Because ultimately it's about being that phoenix. And resurrecting. It's become emerging with spirit. Scorpio is the sign of discipleship. It's a sign of initiation. Of course, in Capricorn, you receive the final initiation. But in Scorpio, you prepare your soul for that path, okay? For that path of initiation. For that path of delving into whatever it is that you need to delve into. Ugly, uh, dark, messy. Because unconscious is not always beautiful. You know, what lies in these archetypal symbology? When we see the death card, we are scared. Because we're scared of, 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 of reality ending. But there is never an, a, truly an end. Energy, it, it cannot be killed. It, it transmutes into something. Okay, It becomes something else. Now, wherever Pluto is, there's always a sense of being dwarfed. Now, if you have Pluto conjunct your ascendant, you always may feel dwarfed by your self-identity or what people expect from you, okay? So in, in Scorpio, uh, it, it may be that, that you're being dwarfed by your deep yearnings or your deep, uh, you know, feelings. You, you, you feel like, I can't deal with them. It's too big. To the problems that come is too volatile, too much for me to to bear, you know. And and at that point, don't let the insidious uh, energy seep in. It's it's about letting go. That's why Scorpio can be manipulative because Pluto is in its lower vibrations. Pluto is manipulative. Scorpio can be warlike because it was ruled by Mars. Pluto is also war, atomic war. When Pluto was discovered, we had the atomic blasts. We truly understood power that's why scorpio is so powerful as is a sign you know if if you look at a scorpio moon or mars and venus ascendant you see their eyes and their eyes are like penetrating okay and um think of the caterpillar becoming the butterfly okay that is pluto and scorpio you may have a lot of dark experiences with sexuality or or maybe coming out or how you connect with your partner or your sexual preferences but you can transmute that i mean that is ultimately what pluto wants you to do transmute all that and and uh take that energy and become that that uh, butterfly when the caterpillar becomes a butterfly become the sh snake that sheds its skin so uh, ultimately it's about an inner awakening and Pluto and Scorpio is here to give you that inner awakening. So I hope you liked that video. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. It means so much. And visit my website www.tnice.com. Bye. Now, if you have your Pluto in Sagittarius, then this is your video. Now, Pluto is not a personal planet. It's not a personal energy. It's a generational energy. Okay, it's a generational planet. So when you study the pattern of Pluto, you understand how generations operate. And it's transpersonal. But believe me, uh, Pluto has a tremendous impact uh, on your natal chart. And uh, it truly helps in, in developing your psyche and who you uh, become. And it only helps you understand what's... Uh, 
you know what's uh, the what is necessary for your highest growth okay now of course pluto can be insidious it can be manipulative in its lower vibrations but uh, it deals with our primal urges okay uh, it deals with fear and uh, the fear need not be our uh, weakness fear can be our greatest strength so think of um, uh, when Bran, uh, Bran Stark from Game of Thrones, he asks his dad that, Dad, do you think that a man can uh, um, uh, can be brave if he is still afraid? And his dad says that, well, that is the only time that a man can be brave. So when we face our fears, we become stronger. And it's true, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, okay? Now, Pluto rules Scorpio or the 8th house, okay? And Pluto is, of course, a Roman god of the underworld. It rules the unconscious. And his Greek counterpart is Hades, okay? Now, um, Pluto rules inheritance, shared resources, power, regeneration, coercion, viruses, obsessions, compulsions, waste, um, uh, intuition, terrorism, shadow governments, puppet governments, atomic power, scandals, all these things that are hidden okay and occult what we don't um, see what we sweep under the carpet okay now pluto rules uh two processes in the physical body the elimination processes and uh, the elimination process and of course the reproductive process so it is uh teaching us that to create we must expunge or eliminate so pluto's greatest lesson to us is of letting go think of the quotation by herman Hesse. he says that some of us some of us think that um to be in power is to control okay that that uh, when we hold on to something it makes us stronger but sometimes it's about letting go and this is what pluto teaches us it teaches us to let go okay let go of what's not serving our highest good um, so wherever pluto sits in your chart um, there'll always be a sense of being dwarfed by that that challenge now remember that jupiter had shrunk uh, pluto okay so there's always this this thing of shrinking but then you die a thousand deaths and you rebirth okay and and become the proverbial phoenix so in the tarot this is the god that is associated with pluto death again teaches you life is cyclical okay Every, everything repeats it's a pattern it's a cyclical pattern okay now um sagittarius is ruled by jupiter and it's it's a planet of expansion it's it's a very spiritual planet it's a fire sign it's it's yang energy and i think here pluto teaches us uh, lessons um, that deal with um, philosophy our philosophies may change uh, as we grow and evolve with uh, with the dark uh, transits of pluto i call them 500 shades of dark Every time Pluto touches a personal planet, you know, it becomes 500 shades of dark for you, for all of us. So, um, think about Seven Seals, okay, the, um, the, the masterpiece by Ingmar Bergman. You think about death playing chess with the protagonist. I mean, that's what Pluto is doing with us. It's playing chess with us. It's teaching us every step of the way that sometimes yeah we need to use power and control but oftentimes it's about letting go how we use power when when pluto was discovered we we came face to face with with uh, what devastation the atomic energy could do because we decided to drop bombs uh, instead of use that energy for something um, different but it can be now um cause is an obsession uh, obsessive component to pluto so obsession for travel pluto and sagittarius definitely you want to travel travel see the world you want to suck life out of experiences because pluto digs deep gets to the crux of everything you you are not just satisfied with a degree that says okay you got a phd so and so but you really want to 
to not only study something you're tremendously passionate about, but you you want higher education to serve your soul growth and your spiritual awareness. Because remember, Sagittarius is is that point when the arrow uh, is 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 um, in flight, about to strike the directionality that you have chosen. So it's it's a sign of intuition, awareness. So being having Pluto there definitely makes you very intuitive, makes you very open to what you perceive of uh, in foreigners. Either you're open to them or you're closed, like the like the topic of immigration. Either you support it or you don't. Uh, Pluto can take you both ways. Of course, there is a tremendous compulsive, obsessive, possessive side. To Pluto, but there's always also this regenerative side to it. There's also this side of of um, greater awareness, because Pluto is is truly taking us uh, into the very quagmire of our unconscious, deep deep within our psyche, so that we may uh, face our shadows. Now with Sagittarius, it's a very restless energy. So this, this can be exacerbated until you create so much trauma around it that, that you've just got to let that, that ideology die and be born again. You know, religion, Sagittarius also has a very uh, religious energy signature. So maybe what you perceived about religion, what you were told, you don't accept that, you have developed your own ideology, you want to, you know, have your own higher wisdom, you want to see life through your own uh, lenses, okay? So that was a bit about... Um, uh, Pluto in Sagittarius. Hope you like that video. Please like, comment, subscribe, share. It means the world to me. And let me know what you think of my work uh, in the comment section below. Or you can even email me uh, to book a private session. Thank you. Bye. Now, interesting that now I'm finally making the video of Pluto in Capricorn because this is the very placement of Pluto right now as we head to the 2020 super conjunction okay a uh, very special moment uh, in time 2020 and let's see what uh, Pluto and Capricorn is all about so Pluto went into Capricorn 2008 okay and everything shifted can you go back in your mind and can you go back to 2008 and and today is 2019 can you even um relate those two words i don't think so it's so different everything has changed uh we're actually discovering that people are standing up to corrupt governments people are actually saying no to the banking cartel people are trying to uh birth cryptocurrency and blockchain technology so what is pluto in astrology okay pluto is our primal urges pluto is our fear Pluto is unfairiousness. Pluto can be insidious, manipulative in its lower vibrations, of course. But Pluto is mysterious, surely. It's uh, when the scientists discovered, uh, astronomers discovered uh, Pluto, the world saw the birth of atomic power. And that, my friend, is the energy of Pluto. Atomic power, tremendous power. Power that can destroy but power that can also create. Pluto uh, rules Scorpio, all eight house issues, uh, like inheritance, shared resources, power, regeneration, um, uh, obsession, compulsion, viruses, shadow governments, puppet governments, terrorism, uh, waste, yeah, waste, you know. So we're going to come up with some really interesting waste management stuff right now with Pluto and Capricorn. And of course, Pluto and Aquarius is going to be a completely different energy signature, 2026. Now, uh, Pluto deals with scandals also. So there's always, uh, and, and money, big money, corporate money, you know. Um, mafias, mafioso, mafia, mafioso. So even uh, during the time that Pluto was discovered, the marriage, American Mafia and Al Capone and all were like completely in power and you know but everything it just wrapped itself up you see and today 
uh, that Pluto is in Capricorn, which is all about um, corporations, uh, the banking cartels, uh, uh, hospitals. We are seeing tremendous change in in all of this. We are now uh, questioning the 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 structures we've set up because Pluto destroys nuclear energy. It's, it's it will destroy. It's it's about death. What is not um, for our highest good, whether it be individual or the collective. Whatever we need to expunge, whatever we need to eradicate exterminate will be done so okay whether we uh, let it happen um, knowingly or whether we don't it's gonna go okay Pluto also rules our elimination processes and our reproductive processes so as it creates life it also eliminates what is unnecessary because the human body cannot function if it doesn't eliminate correctly you know that if your elimination system is messed up you you cannot heal so body expunges or does away with what is not necessary and that is the very energy signature of this card reverse the death it's about endings and new beginnings it's it's about cycles it teaches us that everything is cyclical okay and pluto is forever there it's it's a transpersonal energy it's very small it's it's tinier than the moon okay and the scientists have already demoted and promoted and demoted and promoted pluto many times i think right now the consensus is that pluto is a planet again it's been reinstated as a planet so uh, i definitely think that pluto is is diabolical volatile and uh, if you need to know where you need to let go how you need to control your primal urges, how you need to work with your unconscious. That is Pluto's domain. And Capricorn is about the conscious reality. It's Saturn's domain. It's the only sign, it's like Leo. It's a sign that's ruled esoterically and exoterically by Saturn, the karma bearer, the, the boundary creator, okay? The, the, the reaper. So uh, Capricorn is fix is is of course a cardinal sign but it can be quite fixed okay it's very stubborn again okay and you know it's the cleave is uh the, the goat okay so the goat can of course work very hard so pluto in capricorn is is definitely going to shake up what uh we hold in term how this the structures of saturn are working in our life and how um we need to do away what we need to do away with okay for instance wherever capricorn falls in your chart uh, if you have um pluto there for instance it's your fifth house then you are going to recreate uh, a rebirth your creativity many times and you're a capricorn capricorn is solid manifestation so amidst all the flux and the change you might be able to manifest something that you creatively do and make it a business and succeed in it okay so um yeah definitely pluto transits to your personal planets can appear to be like really challenging like um 400 shades 500 shades of dark as i call it okay not 50 shades of gray anymore but it's all for your higher growth pluto is very chironic in the sense that it teaches you that the poison is the remedy, the poison is the medicine, you know. Uh, yeah, we can be afraid, we can run away, we can um, avoid or we can intoxicate ourselves. But at the end of the day, there is nothing like facing up to our fears. It makes us a better person. It gives us strength, an infinite reservoir of strength within us that we yes we can stand up to our greatest fears and we can uh, triumph over them you know we will not allow fear to incapacitate us now capricorn definitely is a leader and having pluto and capricorn you're definitely uh, pretty direct pretty uh, straightforward about how things go and um, about your resources there could be um, capricorn likes to you know acquire and hoard so there could be like letting go and recreating your resources again if capricorn's like a second house or something 
okay ultimately remember what Herman has said that <clears throat> some of us think that holding on makes us stronger but sometimes it's about letting go so Pluto teaches us that it's all right if we hurt if things get messy if things get out of hand it's all right to let it go because only then do we um, can we be the caterpillar that became a butterfly or we can be the snake that shed its skin so ultimately Pluto is trying to make us into that Phoenix and so we can resurrect and fly away into greater awareness Hope you like that video as much as I like making it for you. Like, comment, subscribe, share. And let me know what you think of these videos. Visit my website www.tinahinks.com. Thank you. Now, if you have your Pluto in Aquarius, then this is your video. And Pluto will go into Aquarius. Of course, now it's in Capricorn from 2008. 2026, Pluto enters Aquarius. And some say that this is truly the beginning of the age of Aquarius. But I think this age of Aquarius has been percolating in our unconscious for a very long time, actually. So, um realize my mic was off okay so um, Pluto what do you think Pluto stands for in astrology Pluto is all about transformation death metamorphosis rebirth okay Pluto deals with our primal urges and and our fear okay now fear need not be our biggest enemy Fear can also be our greatest strength and our greatest motivator. And that's ultimately what Pluto wants us to learn. Uh, how to transmute that fear, you know. So Bran, Bran uh, Stark from Game of Thrones, he asks his dad, is very pertinent to this uh, topic. He says, um, he thought about it, okay. Can a man still be brave if he's afraid? You know, Ned Stark, his father replies to him in his typical Ned Stark way. Well, this is the only time that a man can be brave, okay? So our fear can be our greatest strength. It need not decapacitate, incapacitate us, you know. It can propel us towards a greater awareness as to why we are afraid of the things we are afraid of. Because fear is not something the human condition can avoid. If you're born a human, you are going to experience fear some point uh, in your life okay but how you transmute that fear is Pluto's domain and if you learn the lesson that Pluto is trying to teach you through transits and through conversa psychic conversations because Pluto also rules intuition then you have learned to work through the karma of Pluto. Pluto is very chironic uh, in the sense that it tells you that uh, the poison is actually a medicine like homeopathy also, okay? Now, uh, Pluto is mysterious. It's, it's icy cold and it's tiny actually. It's smaller than the moon. And it's been demoted, promoted, demoted, promoted many times from a planet to a non-planet, planet to non-planet. Uh, kind of like uh, the myth, Jupiter did shrink Pluto, okay? So uh, Pluto rules Scorpio, which is 8th house, and uh, Scorpio's domain is inheritance, shared resources, um, taxes, debts, uh, alimony, um, power, regeneration, viruses, scandals, um, obsession, compulsion, coercion, um, waste, uh, dictators, okay. So Pluto is the god of the underworld, okay, in Roman mythology and his Greek counterpart is Hades. Now Pluto, the unconscious, the, the netherworld is of course the unconscious. Now the conscious mind cannot speak of, of uh, this incomprehensible element that is the unconscious or the, the incomprehensible uh, thing that is the unconscious because conscious mind cannot comprehend 
this okay so that's why we cannot really comprehend the energy of pluto or scorpio that's why scorpions are so mysterious and and pluto likes to dig deep 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 and get to the crux of everything okay um i think uh, okay pluto rules uh, the elimination processes and the reproductive processes telling us that as life needs to create life also needs to let go okay creation letting go humans creating fractals of themselves as other humans and eliminating whatever is not necessary Pluto will teach you that wherever by position uh, of house and by sign it's going to teach you to purge let go okay uh, what's not working let go think of Ingmar Bergman's the seven seals and how death plays chess with the protagonist that's kind of like Pluto playing with us through the transits you can't avoid death okay it you have to face death in um, in your path okay in the tarot this is card number 13 associated with uh, scorpio and pluto this is about endings and new beginnings something that needs to be laid to rest must be laid to rest now okay this teaches us that life is cyclical okay everything is moving in a cycle now as i said that pluto makes us feel dwarfed okay like the problems are insurmountable in front of us with aquarius is a sign of the innovator okay it's a fixed sign so it's kind of like it does not really care about pluto's uh change and flux and impermanence okay but pluto is here to dish out what you need for your highest growth and to purge what's not necessary okay i know we don't always like that in 3d and we kind of fight it we avoid it but what needs to go needs to go death is again just another journey into another state of awareness and pluto is there to guide us through that journey you know astrology is nothing but uh showing how the dance of the planets is echoed in the dance uh, of energy within us okay so uh you know uh, aquarius is about innovation so if you it's a sign of the inventor the, the eccentric genius the weirdo the misfit so here pluto is kind of you know rebirthing that spirit of innovation you may need to you may feel the compulsive need to keep working on something that that you created aquarius is very community oriented so pluto having pluto in aquarius may mean that you see a constant shift from one um, network group to another network group and it just suddenly happens especially if aquarius is your ascendant and you're bam pluto on your ascendant then you know there's always flux and change and shift that that aquarius kind of resents that if you ask me aquarius is not so much about one-to-one -one bonding but more so a, a group group activity it's after all the sign of community so here pluto definitely will uh show you what you need to let go of and if you are fighting that then of course bam tragedy strikes you know when pluto was discovered we had the atomic bomb uh pluto rules big money and mafioso also by the way we had al capone and all those um uh, mafia days uh, in the US and Chicago and all that with uh, when Pluto was you know just being discovered and um, all that you know so Pluto and Aquarius can be very very powerful for uh, discoveries for new things for new ideas to seep in Aquarius rules youth so the youth can adjust to change okay uh, also better than um, uh, the seniors so Aquarius definitely definitely is about uh, the people so here Pluto is definitely going to show you how to connect how to release what you don't uh, require anymore how to move on how to transmute that is the very energy signature of Pluto how to transmute Okay. you're not a victim you're not playing into any any kind of um, schizophrenia there you are transmuting your pain 
and, and, and this transmutation may happen with innovation, great strides in innovation, technology, Aquarius rules um, the internet. So if you may develop a new skill that has to do with the internet every time, you know, Pluto is, is uh, aspecting any of your personal planets, it may teach you uh, about friendship, a thing or two about friendship. So I hope you liked that video as much as I like making it for you. Don't forget to hit the like, um, subscribe button. Subscribe, please. Check out my website, www.tinahits.com. Bye. Now, if you have your Pluto in Pisces, I mean, you're going to have, you're not this generation. Right now, we have Pluto in Capricorn 2026. We'll have uh, Pluto in Aquarius. And then comes Pluto in Pisces. We have some time left for that. But uh, what is Pluto in astrology? So Pluto is, okay, think of a snake shedding its skin. That's Pluto for you, okay? Regeneration, transmutation, metamorphosis, uh, a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. That is Pluto at work for you, okay? Now, Pluto deals with our primal urges, okay? It deals with our fears, but fears don't have to incapacitate us. Fears can elevate us and motivate us. Fear can be our greatest strength if we allow it. Okay, uh, Bran, Bran uh, Stark from Game of Thrones, he, he thought about this one thing, okay? Can a man still be brave if he's afraid? He asked his dad. And his dad looked at him and said, well, that is the only time that a man can truly be brave. Do you see the dichotomy in this, that our fear actually pushes us to mysterious depths so we can glean those pearls of wisdom and grow. Whatever doesn't kill you actually makes you stronger. Okay, Pluto vouches for that. Now, Pluto is mysterious. It's, it's icy cold. It's, it's tiny, actually, smaller than the moon. It has its own set of moons, and Sharon is its uh, leading moon. Uh, Pluto has been demoted, promoted, demoted, promoted for ages. Scientists sometimes consider it not to be a planet, then reinstated as a planet. Right now, I think the consensus is that Pluto is a planet, a planetary body, okay? Uh, not an asteroid. That's what I last heard. Now, uh, Pluto rules Scorpio, which is the eighth house, which uh, deals with our, with, with our inheritance, um, shared resources, alimony, uh, debt, um, obsession, coercion, uh, power, control, uh, viruses, waste, terrorism, um, nuclear bomb, atomic bomb, uh, shadow governments, dictators, terrorists, scandals, uh, the unconscious, you know, everything that's hidden from us. So uh, Pluto is a Roman god of the underworld and Hades is his Greek counterpart. And what do you think this uncon this, this netherworld is? Is the unconscious. Something uh, that the conscious mind can never truly comprehend. That's why Pluto is mysterious. You cannot... Uh, you can maybe write poetry or a hymn to Pluto, but you can't neatly label it and say, okay, this is the energy, that is the energy. Because Pluto is constantly showing you regeneration in ways you did not expect. It can be, of course, a compulsive energy. And uh, with Pisces, we have to learn that, you know, it's not always about being compulsive. It's about facing our fears and the shadow self, okay? That's how we integrate our psyche, it, it basically, Pluto and its lower vibrations can be nefarious, insidious, manipulative. And um, it can even, Pluto in Pisces can uh, sink away. There can be an obsession with um, narcotics or alcohol. Okay, so Pluto gets obsessive sometimes, okay? And Pisces is all about spirituality, the metaphysical, uh, occultism, 
uh, out-of-body experience, aliens, um, stuff like that. And uh, Pluto here can make you obsessed about stuff like that. And um, I mean, although th there can be tremendous work to understand psychic powers, Psychic, uh, Pluto is very psychic and so is Pisces. Uh, psychic powers, ESP, working. But remember, Pluto is not a personal planet, okay? It's a transpersonal planet. And its energies are felt by generations, okay? Now, um, Pluto's greatest lesson to us is actually about letting go. And uh, reminds me of this quote by Herman Hesse. It it goes like some of us think that holding on makes us stronger, but sometimes it's just about letting go. So wherever Pluto sits for you, whatever house of course, and whatever sign and aspects, you can uh, figure out how you need to reinvent yourself. Maybe Pisces is spirituality, mysticism, maybe you re need to reinvent your spirituality. Don't get too fanatic about it. Pisces can have a very dark over to its energy and, and Pluto transits may feel like, you know, Pluto touching a personal planet or, you know, transiting Pluto uh, affecting you in, in, in any way. It can feel like 500 shades of dark, not 50 shades of grey anymore. And here you are left in this murky quagmire of mess. And you don't know how to pick yourself up. Don't give in to... Uh, escape so face it because because you know that's what pluto wants you to do face and transmute face and transmute it's almost like like a process of alchemy you know when pluto was revealed to the world we saw nuclear power and we saw uh, the potential for destruction but power need not be good and bad by itself power is power it's how you use it how the human being uses power. That's what uh, makes it positive or negative. So with Pisces, of course, there is a tremendous interest in other worlds and, and other realities and, and other um, interdimensional beings. And Pluto here can make you very open. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> very open to these energies. Sorry again. I can make you almost feel uh, these energies. Now with Pluto, there's no cogitation. There's no thought. Okay, I know. I'm, let me study about Pluto and I'll get to know Pluto. You can't. Pluto is like, you know it or you don't. It's instinct. You know, that, that instinctual primal self. Okay. And uh, like I said, ultimately Pluto's lesson is to make you the proverbial phoenix. So you resurrect from the ashes and fly away to, to new vistas of higher awareness. Okay? Pisces is a very complex sign because uh, all the, the, the signs empty out. There is residual energy in Pisces. So this makes Pisces kind of like a sponge, you know, like soaking up all these energies and and pluto uh, sitting there can be quite sublime to transmute all the residual crap you don't need okay you you just need to let go and and flow you're a water sign so you'll figure that out and uh, age of pisces is going to be such an empathic compassionate uh, age of pisces no sorry pluto and pisces period is going to be uh, a stress on compassion. I mean, people can get fanatic about being compassionate, like how we see. Uh, I'm vegan myself, but I've seen how uh, people do tend to get put off if vegan people try to push their agenda on someone. I've seen it do more harm than good. So being a fanatic about anything is not all right, okay? Now in the Tarot, this is the card that um, Pluto is associated to. Death. Card number 13, uh, Major Arcana, and it's all about endings and new beginnings, okay? Because with every ending, there is a new beginning, only if you will see it thus, only if you will allow that flowering.
Okay, so that was a bit about um, Pluto in uh, Pisces. I hope you like that video. Uh, thumbs up, comment, visit my website, and uh, let me know what you think.